everybody that I knew that I had ever been to Germany. Oh, wow, the words. Hey guys, what's up? It's Kelly again, and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to share with you guys some of the best advice that I got when I found out I was moving to Germany. And a lot of this advice is really practical, and I think it could be useful if you're going to Germany as a tourist or if you're gonna live there like I did. So the first and probably best piece of advice that I got was to always have cash on you. Cash is definitely king in Germany. There are a lot of places that just will not accept credit cards. So Germans will have German bank accounts, obviously. And with those bank accounts, they get these things called Giro cards, which is like an electronic cash card. And it's sort of like an internal debit card system. So they're able to use that in every establishment without really any issue. Whereas if you're coming over there as an American with an American bank account, an American debit card, an American credit card, you're not going to be able to use it in all of these places. And the places that won't take credit cards are actually kind of surprising. They were surprising to me at least. So there's entire grocery store chains that just will not accept credit cards. There was a museum in Mainz that didn't accept credit cards. There, every time I went to go get my hair cut or to get my nails done, those places didn't take credit cards. So just don't ever assume this place will take credit cards. Surely it's a grocery store because they might not and you're going to kind of be rushing to find an ATM to pay for whatever you wanna pay. Another great piece of advice that I got was how to tip and how much to tip because the tipping culture between Germany and the US is very different. So in the US, you're always going to tip between 15 and 20% and to do the tipping, you're probably either going to leave the cash on the table for the server to be able to get, or whenever you get your credit card transaction receipt, there will be a little slot for you to physically write how much you wanna tip. Then you take your food bill plus the tip, and that's the total that will be charged to your card. Well, it's completely different in Germany. So first of all, this 15 to 20% thing is, is not how you do it. You're basically just going to round up and depending on how much the bill is, you might only round up to the next euro if it's like just like a cup of coffee, or maybe you'll round up two, three additional euro for your food bill. And that's because German servers actually make a livable wage, so they don't depend on tips in order to make a salary. Whereas in the US, the servers depend on your tips to make that livable wage. Also, you're not going to just leave it on the table. The server will actually come to your table for you to make your payment. So she'll, or he will hand you the bill. Let's say it's $17.95 and you're gonna pay with credit card. So you hand them the credit card, they have the handheld credit card machine, and you'll say 20 euro. And that person will know, okay, they're gonna tip me two euro and five cents, and they actually punch in 20 euro and they run it as 20 euro, and that's it. Or if you're paying in cash, let's say you hand them a 50 and you say 20 euro, they'll just give you 30 euro back, that's it. That's how you do the tipping, right then and there in one smooth transaction. Another thing I was told about was how the fund system works. And there's a bunch of things I could talk about, but I wanna focus on fests. So if you go to a fest in Germany or a wine market or whatever, and you wanna get a glass of wine, they'll have the prices on there, let's say it's five euro. And so you pay five euro, but not just are you paying for the wine with that five euro, but you're also putting a deposit down on the glass that the wine is being served to you in. So you drink the wine and you can keep the glass, maybe it's some sort of commemorative glass, like the Christmas markets all have like, you know, fancy um, in, engravings or uh, what is it called whenever it's, inscripted in there you know what i mean so you can keep those maybe as a souvenir or if you want to get the fund back you just take it back to the tent or the booth that you bought it at and they'll give you your two euro back and that's a pretty good thing to know <laughs> so going along with the whole discussion about fest another thing that i was reminded of when i moved to germany was that you can drink in public there and that probably sounds a little strange to any Germans watching this, but if you've been raised in the US, you're very ingrained in this idea that you can't drink in public because it is against the law. I mean, there are a few cities in specific 
states that will allow you to um, drink in public, like New Orleans and Butte, Montana, or two that I remember mostly. Um, but in Germany, the whole country, it's free game for you to be able to just grab a bottle of wine, sit with some friends in a park, and share in public, and it's not a big deal. Or if you go to a fest and you buy a glass of wine, you can walk around the whole town with that glass of wine and it's not an issue. In the US, if you have some sort of fest, there's going to be like a perimeter set up with people, you know, posted to make sure that you're not bringing alcohol outside of the premises because it's illegal. So it's kind of like a really um, cool cultural aspect of Germany that I fully appreciated. And it was nice for someone to remind me like, hey, you can do this. I know it feels weird, but you're allowed to do it. And another thing with drinking is how to properly prost in Germany. So if you're in Germany and you're sharing some alcohol with some friends, so you're having some drinks together, you're going to, first of all, it's very customary to prost at all. And when you prost, you're going to clink glasses and make eye contact with whoever you're clinking with. Otherwise, it's really bad luck. And I started paying attention to this a lot, both whenever I was with like American friends or when I was with German friends. And it's kind of funny, like the difference between them. So Americans are much more prone to like to look down at their drinks when they're cheersing or prosting if they're in German. Germany, uh, they won't look up at each other and I don't know if it's because we're scared we're going to like spill our drinks or if we want to make sure that we're like clinking correctly I'm not really sure why we do it the way we do um, but Germans will very actively look up and prost with confidence while clinking glasses I actually have one more thing to give advice on regarding a fest one specific fest which is the famous Oktoberfest so I got the overall concept of Oktoberfest, but for one, I didn't realize that it's not in October. It's actually at the very end of September, so that was good to know. And then my friend told me, hey, when you go to Oktoberfest, don't be one of these idiots walking around in like jeans and a t-shirt. Make sure you wear a dirndl because that's what all the Germans will be wearing. And I was kind of like on the fence, like, like, really though, like everyone's gonna be wearing dirndl and later hosen. And when I got ready to go to Oktoberfest, I remember being in my hotel room in Munich and feeling a little silly. But when I got there, I was like, okay, yeah, everyone was wearing dirndls and later hosen. And I would have felt really silly if I had been wearing like normal clothes. So I'm super thankful that my friend told me to make sure I wear a dirndl. Another great piece of advice I will share with all of the ladies out there is do not wear high heels. This probably goes for most of Europe, but definitely Germany. Uh, there are a lot of cobblestone sidewalks and streets, and if you're walking around in high heels, the chances of you digging your little heel into a corner of stones is really, actually really high. Um, and you're going to either ruin your shoes, I have a pair of really beautiful leather patent shoes that I completely destroyed on the sidewalks in Mainz, or you're going to probably break your ankle or your leg, so just don't wear them. You can wear wedges, those are no problem. I wore wedges all the time, but just leave your heels at home. Stay in the small hotels. That was another piece of advice I got. Like there will be big, you know, hotel chains in a lot of the bigger cities like Berlin or Dresden or Mainz had, you know, big hotels, but there will be a lot of smaller hotels. Stay in those hotels, guys. They're actually really nice. I feel like in the U.S. we're really uh, prone to always get these like big name chain hotels because you don't really know what you're getting into when you stay in like a small family establishment. But every single one that I stayed in in Germany was perfectly clean, impeccable. It had a lot of charm to it. And they would just be like these adorable little hotels and considerably cheaper than like the bigger names like the Hyatt or Hilton or whatever else you'll find there. So I would highly recommend, and it was great advice that I got, was to stay in the little hotels. Don't shy away from them. They're going to be great. But also be aware of the fact that they might not have 24-hour concierge at these places. So whenever you book a hotel, make sure you're paying attention to when the desk hours are. And if you're going to arrive after the desk hours or need to leave before the desk hours, you need to like communicate that with the hotel and figure something out. 
Uh, that got me once. When you're in Germany, you need to know that you either follow the rules or you should expect to be scolded or corrected. And it's part of that German directness culture that I think a lot of Germans aren't even really aware that this is perceived as being something different, at least to Americans. And I really don't want to intimidate any American from going over to Germany. Um, but just understand that like, if you cross on a red light, don't be surprised if a German comes over and corrects you to tell you that you shouldn't cross on the red light. That's just the way it is, so. <laughs> Along the same lines as like the German directness, I was told about the German stare. Uh, <laughs> And again, I don't think a lot of Germans realize that this is a thing. In the US, we're pretty much taught that staring is rude and not to stare. I mean, I can think of like so many times I've heard a mom like tell their child, don't stare, that's rude. Um, but in Germany, there's a lot of Germans that have no problem with staring. And it's just, from what I understand, is out of curiosity. They're not trying to be rude. It's not seen as that. It's just a sign of their curiosity. So if I would walk down the street wearing like athletic attire, um, which is rare in Germany, usually people change at the gyms. They don't wear their athletic attire out unless they're actively running. Uh, I would get stared at. And uh, it was something that I had to get used to even though I was like told about it before I ever even went to Germany because again like I've been brought up in a culture where you just don't stare and, and if you do you're you're rude and it's not like that in Germany so if you go to Germany and you see a lot of people staring at you don't worry about it they're not being rude they're not being mean they're just curious about whatever you're doing or wearing or maybe you're speaking English or whatever and the last thing I will talk about is my feeling of safety in Germany. When I found out that I was moving to Germany, I started doing a lot of research and I was already well aware of the immigration into Europe, the mass immigration. Um, but I was reading these news articles and watching these things with like a whole different perspective, knowing that I was going to be living there. And I watched some really, I would say, disturbing um, and scary documentaries on YouTube or Facebook or wherever I was finding them that painted like a really harrowing picture of what Germany looks like with all of this, you know, the impact of this mass immigration. And I remember talking to someone about it uh, and they had lived in Germany and they, they looked at me and they were like, Kelly, don't, don't worry about it. You're going to feel safe. Like, don't worry. And I was like, yeah, okay. I mean, you're, it was a guy. So I think that, um, women and men look at safety very differently. Uh, <laughs> so when I went over there, I was a little nervous and I will say that for the year and a half that I lived in Germany, there was not a single place that I went that I felt unsafe. And I'm talking like, there wasn't even like a portion of a street in a city where I felt uncomfortable. And I didn't go everywhere in Germany. I think it would be really difficult to do that in a year and a half while holding a full-time job. But I clocked in some kilometers on my car. I drove back and forth and up and down across the country. And I took the train to many different cities. I saw a lot. And like I said, at no point did I feel unsafe in Germany, no matter who I was with, if I was completely by myself, no matter what I was wearing, um, and no matter what hour of time, it could have been two in the morning, three in the morning, it could have been you know early morning hours, it doesn't matter. I felt completely safe the entire time that I was in Germany. And I put a lot of value on that because I've lived places where I haven't felt safe. And it is, uh, it's, it, it, it affects you. Um, so I'm happy to, to say that I felt really safe in Germany. And I hope that anyone planning to go over there and live or go as a tourist, I hope that you guys feel safe too.
right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. That was some of the best advice I got about moving to Germany. If you have some other advice, maybe you live in Germany as an expat or maybe you're German yourself, put it in the comments below. I'd be interested to read them and I'm sure some other viewers would be too. Uh, thank you so much to all of my patrons. You guys are awesome. If you're interested in my Patreon campaign, check out the link in the description below. And otherwise, guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and click subscribe. It helps me a lot. Leave a thumbs up if you like the video. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!